All right then, so before we start playing around with Redis, we need to set up a Redis instance, and there's a few different ways that we can do that. The first way is to install Redis on your computer and have that spin up a Redis server that we can use as a data store. Now on a Mac, that's pretty easy to do. You can just use Homebrew to install it, but on Windows, you have to, as always, dive through a few hoops, first of all, which includes setting up Windows Subsystem for Linux, which allows you to run a Linux environment on Windows and install it through that. The second way is to use a Docker container to run the ready stack, which I guess requires a little bit of knowledge around Docker itself. And the third option, which is what we're going to be doing, is to use Redis Cloud, which allows us to set up a Redis database online. It's got a free tier, which is well more than enough for getting started with, and it requires very, very little setup. So we can kind of get up and running with Redis really quickly. It also comes with a nice tool called Redis Insights, which we can use to play around with Redis, test different commands, and visualize our stored data. So let's get started by making a new Redis database on Redis Cloud. So first up, you need to go to redis.com and click on this button right here to sign up for a free account. I've already done that, so I'm going to log in. And when you do sign up or log in, you're going to be directed to your Redis dashboard. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a subscription right here. So click on that button. There is a free tier. If you click on fixed plan, scroll down, you can select cloud vendor. I'll stick with AWS. You can select a region. I'll stick with the defaults as well. So this is the free tier right here. So that's what we're going to create. We need to give this subscription a name. I'm going to call it NetNinja, and then I'm going to create this subscription. Okay, so once that's created, a subscription can contain different databases. Now on the free tier, we just get one database. So let's create that database. We can give this a name. I'm going to call it Redis Books because that is what our application is going to be called later on. And we can choose Redis Stack or just Redis Core. Um, we're going to stick with Redis Stack purely because in the future I might do another course all about Redis Stack and I might use this database for that as well. So you can scroll down here and look at some other options as well if you like. I'm just going to click Activate Database and it's just going to take a couple of minutes now to create this database. However, what we need to do once it's created is click on this Connect button right here and then we're going to be using Redis Insight right here now. So you can choose your platform to download it on and then click on the download button to download Redis Insight and install that. Then also you want to copy this URI right here. This is your connection string if you like. And we're going to paste that in to Redis Insight. So download this and copy this thing right here. All right, so once you've installed Redis Insight, it's going to look something like this right here. Now, what we need to do is set up a connection from Insight to the database we just created on redis.com. So to do that, click add Redis database and you wanna select add database manually. Now, if you come to the host and paste in what we just copied from redis.com, that connection string, it's gonna auto populate all of this for you. So paste that in and you'll see all of these things change right here. Now, if we go down here, we can add the Redis database. You can test the connection first if you wanted to, but now that is the database added. Cool. So first up, let me give you a quick tour of some of the things that we're seeing here. This little key icon is the Redis browser, which allows us to browse through the data inside our Redis database. Down here, you can see a list of all the keys to the different bits of data that I've got. This is the key name right here. So we can see we've got one for books and then a bunch of different ones for individual books. And the key names follow that naming convention that I mentioned in the last video where we have the resource name, books, and then a colon, and then some ID for that individual book. And you can see that the data types for all of those books is a hash, and the sorted set is for the list of book titles. Now, if I click on one of those things, I can see the data for that key in the right panel over here. So right now we have a blurb, a rating, an author, and a title field inside these hashes. I could add more fields if I wanted to using this button and also refresh the data to make sure I've got the latest version as well as delete the data using this trash can button. The next icon over here is the workbench area and this is where we're going to be sending all of the commands to Redis from as we learn about them. And we'll see a confirmation of the commands along with any return value down here. So the way this works is that I can write a new command like this and don't worry about what I'm writing yet we're going to cover that later on but we can write our command up here and then hit the green play icon or hit control enter 
and that sends the command to the Redis server. And then down here, we're going to get a response really quickly. So these are the two areas we'll be using the most, the database browser to see all of the data and then the workbench to send commands to Redis. The other parts of the tool are for analysis of the database, pub sub and cloud functions and triggers, which are still in beta. So we're not going to be really using any of those three tabs. But anyway, now we've got a Redis database set up and Redis Insight installed. Let's crack on with a few basic commands in the next lesson that we can use to store and retrieve data.